Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can take any webcam, such as this C922 Pro right here, one of the most used streamer cams of all time, and take it from this to this in just seven actionable steps that you can complete right now. And I'm also going to explain why we do each step so that you can understand and create some unique styles for your webcam entirely for yourself. Let's go. Hey, I'm LJ with streamscheme.com. I'm also a variety streamer over at twitch.tv slash LJM underscore. There is a link in the description to that if you want to go check me out while I'm live, maybe ask me some questions, or just call me an idiot while you watch me try and solve puzzles and video games. There's also a link to our website, streamscheme.com. It has over 700 guides for all things streaming related, all things content creation. If there isn't a video covered on the channel for a topic, then I recommend checking that out because it is written by streamers for streamers, and it's a fantastic resource entirely for free. Today, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step and practical demonstration of how you can take a C922 that's just been plugged in and set up inside OBS or Streamlabs from a brand new camera all the way up to a full unique style. I'm also going to break down the do's, the don'ts, and the issues. I no longer use a webcam, but back when I did use the C922 Pro, I used this exact setup to make it look good. And you guys were constantly asking me how I did that. However, I would never go back to a webcam now that I've upgraded to a mirrorless, and I think there's even a better middle ground that you can start doing right now to have better quality than a webcam. But I will cover that in a second, because first, I want to tell you guys about our sponsor, Skillshare. I am sure you guys know about Skillshare by now, and I'm so excited that they've teamed up with us because if you don't know who they are, they're an online learning community with thousands of classes for creators of all levels. And the first 1,000 subscribers of mine who sign up with the link in the description will get a free month of premium membership, which means you can check out, watch, and learn from any class you want over the next month. I actually use Skillshare every few months to refresh myself on production concepts such as lighting, composition, photography, and graphic design because in this industry, it is so easy to get stuck in a routine. A class I just watched this week was YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit, which is written by Marcus Brownlee, one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform and someone I really respect. It was nice to remind myself that I needed flashier hooks at the start of my videos to help engage and retain you guys. Skillshare is a fantastic platform focused entirely for learning. It is less than $10 a month with no ads and you can watch as much as you want in that time. So you get as much out of it as you choose to get out of it. It is a fantastic investment in yourself as a creator. And if you're still not sure, again, first 1,000 people to click the link will get a free sign up. So check it out. Okay, so first things first, let's get into setting up your webcam and getting it inside Slobs or OBS. You're obviously going to plug your webcam in and have it all set up so it's looking at you. But then you're going to go into your OBS or your slobs. You're going to click add source. You're going to click add new video source and you're going to select your webcam. Now, what I want you to do is to full screen this. You'll right click it and you'll click transform and you'll click fit to screen. And you're going to see that it looks just awful. So we need to turn off all the automatic settings. Right click the camera source properties, change default to custom. Now you can edit the resolution to be 1080p or 720p. That said, it is more intensive on your PC, so I also recommend 720p for most people who don't have high-end computers. Next up is FPS or frames per second. Now, I noticed some lag issues when I set this to highest, but they went away if I set it to match the source or set it to 30. So that's something to keep in mind in this section. Color space, you'll want to set it to 709. And finally, color range, you set to full. Now we click the configure video button, and we need to turn off all the automatic settings by clicking these boxes. And the final step, the exposure setting, I'd like you to set this to minus five personally, because I found other exposure settings cause aggressive lag. However, if you're finding it with negative five, you can change it from there. Your exposure essentially cuts light or adds more light depending on where you set it to. So this will give us our base look, just a dirty webcam shot without any adjustments and just a room light on. Now, depending on how big your room is, how much natural light it gets, or just where your lighting is already placed in your room, you might have a much higher quality image than I do. But the reason mine looks like this is because I have quite a small office with zero natural lighting, which means I have to do a lot of work to make the image look good. We'll be adjusting all of our settings today inside this little video configure box. However, I know that some of you guys use a different looking box or you adjust it in your own webcam settings. So I'll be covering exactly what each setting does so you can adjust it in yours as well. Before we get into the practical settings, I want to talk about how no matter what you do or sometimes no matter what tweaks you make, it's going to be very hard to make a webcam look high quality and professional. And in fact, the more tweaks you do to digitally alter the image, the more you're going to degrade that image and make it look less quality. For example, later on, I'm going to be cropping my image in slightly to get rid of some of the ugly stuff around my shot. But by doing this, I'm also going to lose some quality. So we're going to be covering the balancing act that is getting an image to look good while also trying to make sure you keep the image quality high. 
The major problem is that webcam sensors are tiny and they process images terribly. Not just that, they also handle color really badly, as we're going to see when we get to the white balance section in a little bit. They're fine to start out with when you're just a beginner, but I do recommend if you do have an old smartphone or even a DSLR or mirrorless camera that'll work just laying around, using either of those will go a much longer way. For example, a smartphone has a much better sensor in it and will provide much better color science in order to give you nice looking skin tones and a nice looking background. But you're here to learn about webcams, so with that out of the way, let's get into making your webcam look pro. The first step to making a webcam look good is you obviously need to get some sort of lighting. Now, the major mistake people make with lighting is they don't understand the concepts of lighting a subject. Because when you're just starting out, you think of lighting and you think of room lights, or you think of just light bulbs behind someone. But the reality is, is that all lighting isn't just designed to make an image brighter, it's in fact designed to make a single subject brighter. I'm lighting myself as the subject, and you're going to be lighting yourself as the subject. Let's turn off our room light and instead switch over to my Elgato key light. I know Elgato key lights are a bit expensive, but I think buying one of these will really set you up when you're starting out. You see, you'll never need to upgrade it ever again. You can even get the key light airs that are a bit cheaper or the Elgato ring light, which will do a similar job. These aren't sponsored either. I just think they're great lights that you won't ever need to replace or buy a new one. And when it comes to buying gear, if you can purchase something that you'll never need to upgrade ever again, that's a great investment. Now, instantly when I switch to my key light, you can see a big difference in how my image looks and how much more quality there is. With my key light, I've placed it in front of me, raised slightly and angled down to shine light just on one side of my face. That causes shadows to occur on the opposite side, adding depth and what gives me a cinematic look for my face. I actually have my light set up the exact same way for this shot. So if I were to be looking at my monitor right now, rather than at the lens, you can actually see the light to dark and the depth that it will add. So let's do a quick test now to show you how light works. If I were to raise the brightness of my light all the way to max, you can see what's going wrong. Now, the technical term for this is I look like shit. I'm just kidding. It means I'm overexposed. It means I'm too bright. So let's lower me all the way down to zero. Now, as you can see here, the technical term for this is I look like shit. But in reality, it means I'm underexposed. You need to find a good balance for you and obviously without lighting your background as well. The crucial thing is to make sure that none of your face is overexposed or none of your face is completely underexposed. Make sure you light yourself and get a nice balanced light on it. Once we've done this, we can also use the gain feature to slightly do adjustments. I also think that if you want to underexpose yourself slightly and then use the gain feature to bring yourself back, it'll go a long way to make sure you don't have a really bright light shining in your face. Now, the gain feature will digitally brighten your entire image, which means you will also add digital noise. Now, when I say noise, I don't mean noise for your ears. I mean this kind of background fuzz and this background texture, which I'm going to try and show you here. As I mentioned earlier, you can also use the exposure tool. However, the exposure tool adds a lot of lag to your image. So maybe don't bother with this one. Just use your gain. So we need to start talking about white balance because this is where it gets hard. Now, the reason I love these Elgados is because they actually have multiple white balances. I can set them to orange, aka tungsten, or I can set them to white, aka daylight. You see, the second major mistake most people make when setting up their shots, especially with webcams, is that they don't understand what a white balance is. Now, a white balance essentially means that different lights produce different color temperatures. And then inside your cameras and your webcams, you have to set your white balance to match that light or else your colors will look wrong. For example, that's why sometimes you look super pale or super green on your webcams because it's trying to adjust for a white balance that is incorrect. I can change my Elgato key light to produce around a 3000 Kelvin orange white balance, or I can set it to a 6000 and produce a blue. These are the complete opposite ends of the spectrum, but it gives you an idea of what it means. I try and set this to be around 45 to 4600, which is a nice white light, and then I'll set my webcam or my mirrorless to be the same. But now I really recommend looking up white balance charts and watching some videos specifically about it so you can understand it more in depth. But you can also just set it to 4500 to 4600 on your lights and on your webcam or adjust it slightly until you find a nice skin tone for it. Just don't do this automatically because very often your camera will get it very wrong. So to adjust this manually, go back into camera configurations with a little white box and you can drag it around here and set it to different numbers while watching yourself on your screen. I do recommend doing this after you get your key light set up as well. And once you've got it honed in to look nice and expose you properly, because if you do it before, it's just going to need to be changed again after. Okay, so you have your light and you have your white balance. Now we need to talk about framing because this can be honestly a make or break it moment. First things first, you need to clean up your shot, clean up your room. 
the amount of people who i click on their stream and they're streaming in a room that's full of vaseline bottles toilet paper there's trash everywhere i understand they're your bedrooms but if you're going to broadcast it to the internet please clean up please it's not hard to do it's also important in this section to make sure you're framing yourself nicely as well as your background i think a lot of people give themselves far too much headroom and they also give themselves far too much down here feel free to crop in just enough so that you've got your background and you in the image obviously you can do this by moving your webcam around or if you right click add filter you'll be able to add the crop pad filter and actually start cropping in that way don't go too wide or too tight on this and i will give you the warning that the more you crop in because you're essentially digitally zooming into the image making it larger you are also going to degrade the image slightly and have a lower quality at the end of this video you're going to see that if i hadn't cropped in i would have a much higher quality sharper image but because i had to crop in to remove fans and other things from my background it's going to have a lower quality but also 90 percent of the time you're going to be in a much smaller camera on a game screen so most people won't notice that drop in quality we'll notice it today because it'll be full screen though next your eye line is really important here now what i want you to do is i want you to set your eye line up to be pretty much on par with your eyes i don't want it to be too high looking down on top of your head because that's a bit weird and I really don't recommend going too low because if you go too low, it's going to be looking up at your chin and accentuating any double chins or in my case, a triple chin with a beard that a 15 year old could grow. If you can, I also recommend placing your camera so it's close to where your chat is going to be on your screen. So when you look over to read chat, you're also looking over and kind of looking down the lens a little bit because it really goes a long way to engage people and make it clear when you're looking over at them, your audience. If you're really struggling with nice framing, maybe you're not in a place where you can have your own background or your own space, then I have a tip coming up for you soon that should be pretty easy to make sure this is all solved for you. But before I get into that, let me throw it out there. What is more important than your webcam quality? That's right, your microphone. Now, if you want to set your microphone up, maybe you've just bought yourself a USB condenser mic like the Yeti or the AT2020 Plus. I have a link in the description, which is my how to set up a microphone video. It's probably the video I'm most proud of on the entire channel because the amount of people who have commented on it saying it helped them so much. If you want to upgrade your mic and make it sound quality without actually having to buy a whole new mic, go check that out. It'll help you a lot. Also linked in our description is our Discord. That's right. Feel free to join our Discord. It has over 26,000 members in it. Every single person there is just talking about the problems they've encountered and how to fix them, how to grow, giving tips and advice. We don't have any go lives or any kind of spam. So that means it's literally just devoted to education. Also, it's where you can go to download our free animated overlays and our free stingers and other resources that I've released for you guys. Go check it out. Even if you want to download them and leave, you can just jump in, download and leave. Go for it. These days, I use a mirrorless camera for my setups and I've always used one for the videos on this channel, which means I've gotten a lot of people asking the same thing. LJ, how did you add that blur filter to your background? Which makes me very sad because it means that Apple and Nvidia have successfully convinced people that everything is just a filter. The reality is this blur is called depth of field and it's the idea of just having an out of focus background. You see on real cameras, you actually have lenses and on lenses they have f-stops and these f-stops will change how much light and how much is in focus on webcams you don't really have any of this which means it's very very hard to get an out of focus background meaning that everything is in focus and sharp and it means it's much harder for you to stand out from your background to fix this i recommend doing two things the first try and add as much distance between you and your background as possible the more distance you can get the easier it'll be to make you stand out from your background but I also know that we're working in offices and small rooms. So the next option is to use colored lights. Now, I don't mean fairy lights or these kind of like bar lights here. I mean specifically wall lights, like lights that are going to shine a big bright color across everything. Another option you can do is to get a smaller light and shine it at your back, like in my old videos where I had that kind of rim around my shoulders. This will also add a separation between you and your background. Your background should be a little bit darker than you if you've lit yourself right but not so dark it looks like you're living in a cave. If your background is overexposed, it's also gonna to be too distracting as well. So why don't I recommend getting fairy lights or these little strip lights? Well, on a webcam, as I said, there's no out of focus effects. There's no way to make it look blurred. So it means that when you have these fairy lights, they just look overexposed and bright. Whereas in my image on my mirrorless camera, when I've got them, it kind of smooths them out, makes them out of focus and gives you what's called bokeh, B-O-K-E-H, if you wanna look up more about that. This is why we start with lights that don't necessarily appear in the shot and instead add a whole color to the background to give you separation. By doing this, you won't have the ugly kind of overexposed bulbs and it'll give you more depth. And if you can't make your background look nice, don't worry, I do have a tip coming up for you, so stay tuned. Okay, so this next section is actually going to be crucial for a lot of you guys. And I haven't seen a single webcam video 
cover this. Sometimes when you add a light to your background, it will be so bright and overexposed, it is impossible to tell what it is. For example, my little Twitch lamp there, a lot of you guys would put something like that in the background and it wasn't look anything like what it's supposed to. This is because your gain or your ISO on your camera is set to be really high. It's digitally brightening your whole image. And that's usually because you're trying to brighten yourself. But by brightening yourself, you brighten every single light in the image, including these little lamps. Now, if you can't turn the lamp down to be less intense on the actual lamp, then what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to drop your gain or your ISO down until your lamp looks good. And then you have to boost your key light or the main light that's on you until you look and match. You're balancing out the brightness of your image and the brightness of your actual lights in the shot in order to find a good match. I'm not gonna call people out, but I've actually seen Twitch partners give advice to people and say, just give out, it's too bright, you won't make it work. No, you can just brighten yourself with another light, my God. <laughs> also, I know I said it's really hard to add depth of field to a webcam, so I know I'm gonna get people commenting things like, well, actually, LJ, there's software that'll read you and then read your background and add the blur to the background. Yep, there is. And it's incredibly GPU and CPU intensive. And 99% of my audience doesn't have a computer that can handle that, encode a stream, play a game, and be good to go. So no, I'm not going to tell you guys to use digitally blurred backgrounds. Speaking of GPU intensive and CPU intensive things, let's talk about color correction and adding a LUT. Because these are the final steps that you have to do once you've done everything else. If you do these things too early, what's going to happen is you're actually going to make your image look really, really bad. By color correcting and adding a LUT, you're essentially saying, I've got my image looking as good as it can. I now need to do my final tweaks. If you add a LUT to a bad image with bad lighting, you're essentially just going to be sprinkling glitter on a dog turd. And if you add color correction to a really bad image and have to correct it a lot, you're going to be degrading your image digitally and really stretching and pulling colors. You need to get it looking as good as possible inside the camera before you do any of these steps. There are two ways to color correct. The first is by going back into your camera configuration and changing it in here. You can make slight tweaks to your contrast, your brightness, your saturation, and kind of work to get a nicer looking image or a nicer looking color or more natural color. I really recommend trying to get it looking as good as possible here first, as I said. The second step is to add a filter and add the color correction filter. Now inside this color correction filter, you have a few settings. Your gamma, aka your gain or exposure, which really doesn't work for you here because if you boost your gamma in this section, you're gonna digitally brighten the entire image on top of everything else you've done, which is gonna cause issues. You've also got your contrast, which means you push your brights and your darks to the opposite spectrums. It's a nice way to add a bit more edginess to yourself, but it can also add some shiny bits to your nose and other parts of your face. Brightness is a weaker gain, essentially. I wouldn't worry too much about using this one. Saturation is how colorful you are, how, how rich the colors are, for example. So you can boost this up a little bit, but only by a tiny bit. Q shift, I don't think you guys are going to need much, but essentially it kind of just pushes all of the colors to be a little bit different on the spectrum, meaning that if you're slightly incorrect, you can push it a bit to go warmer or a bit to go greener. But if you do this slightly wrong, it's going to really throw you out. And opacity, you only need for very stylized images. It essentially makes you go see-through. Again, I'm going to say this as much as I can. Do small tweaks. If you do large tweaks in color correction or large tweaks to your saturation or to any of these things, you are going to push yourself to look very odd. Boosting your saturation up a lot, boosting your hue up a lot will really throw out the colors and make it very obvious. The next and one of the most important filters should be the final one that you add to your entire webcam is a LUT filter. Right click, add filter, apply LUT is the filter you want to pick. And now you will need a LUT file for this. I'll add some free ones in the description for you. Now, what is a LUT? Well, it stands for lookup table. Now, this means that there's a bunch of squares inside the folder that tells your computer what colors should be. It'll say red should be shifted to be this type of red. I hate to explain it this way, but it's pretty much like a bunch of Instagram filters. But if you've ever used an Instagram filter, you'll know that if you have a very orange image, for example, and you apply an orange filter, for example, then it's going to push all of those orange colors to be even more orange and turn the entire thing into an Oompa Loompa. This is essentially what happens with LUTs. If you put a LUT on and you leave the intensity up high, it's going to push all of your colors to be very extreme, especially if you've already pushed those colors to be extreme before you add the LUT. I use a self-made LUT on everything I do. In fact, I'm using one right now that I've built for myself, but I'll add a link in the description to some of my favorite websites and where you can get LUTs for yours as well. I want to tell you one more super secret bonus tip before I get on to the final tip about how you can work with your background. So come in close. If you're worried about acne, blemishes, or scars, 
don't be everyone has them and you're awesome but if you still are concerned and want to take some of the edge off of it then you can actually go into your camera configuration and just slightly lower the sharpen if you drop it down from say 128 down to about 100 or even 90 it'll kind of add this nice blur to you it'll kind of feel like it's a beauty filter but again don't worry too much about it it isn't a big deal Okay, so maybe you don't have enough background room in order to actually set up all those lights and do all this fancy stuff. Maybe you can't crop things out like an air conditioning unit, or maybe your mum's in the corner throwing beer bottles at raccoons and you just can't do anything about it. Well, then you need a green screen. That's right. If you want to, you can get one for 20 to 30 dollar dues over on Amazon or for a bit more expensive, like this $200 Elgato pop-up one. I really like this as well. The fact that I can just push it down to the bottom and it's gone is fantastic but it doesn't matter what you get as long as it works. The problem is, is that I see a lot of you guys using green screens quite badly. You put yourself up right against them, which means you add shadows to the green screen, making it harder to key out the green. The other issue is you're not lighting the green screen by itself. I really recommend getting a light designed just to light the green screen. And so it's nice and flat and even. If you have really bright sections of the green screen and really dark sections, you're going to need multiple color keys in order to actually remove it. So try and light it as evenly as possible. And then when you jump into OBS or slobs, go to add filters, add a color key, click the custom color and select your green screen. Then you can use the similarity to remove the shades of green and smoothness to smooth out the fall off on the edges of green of you. Then you'll have removed your background and you'll be good to go. But removing backgrounds is boring it's old hat everyone's done that do something fun and unique one of the reasons i grew early on was because everyone would join and go are you actually in a milk aisle right now because i found an image of a milk aisle put it behind me but then i was like no this still looks fake so i took the milk aisle put it in photoshop added the blur to the entire thing so it looked like depth of field as we discussed earlier and then bam everyone really thought i was in a milk aisle it worked. It was my thumbnail. It got me clicks and it really engaged people. So find a way to make yourself stand out. With all that out of the way, you should be a pro at setting up your webcam. Maybe you made yours look better than mine. Join the Discord and show me your setups. I'd love to see them. And in the meantime, feel free to check out my other content linked in the description. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.